This video is sponsored by Mubi. Go to Mubi.com slash Thomas Flight for your extended free trial. <laughs> what does a chimpanzee on a rampage in a sitcom have to do with two siblings who are trying to capture images of a UFO? In Nope, there are two sides of the story that at first feel somewhat disconnected. At the very opening of the film, we see a POV shot of a horrifying scene. We don't get any context for what is happening, but it's pretty clear something has gone horribly wrong. After this opening, we don't see or hear anything about this moment again until OJ and Emerald run into Ricky. I was a little juke. And we learn that he was a child star in a sitcom that had a chimpanzee as part of the cast. Yeah, my pops told me about this show, the monkey went crazy or something. We eventually see a flashback of what went wrong, and within that scene, we see a very traumatized little Ricky. So what happened really, man? But there's a moment here that gives away the connection between this subplot and the main story. Listen to how Ricky tells the story of what happened to him. You haven't seen the Bad Gordy sketch on SNL? I mean, it pretty much nailed it better than I could. When he tells the story, he doesn't give his own first-hand account of his experience. He talks about SNL's rendition of the event. He communicates and processes his own traumatic experience, not through his own perspective, but through a depiction of the events. Gordon Catan goes off. <laughs> and it's, it's Catan. He's just crushing it. He is a force of nature. He is killing on that stage. I think this clues us into the idea at the core of Nope. A relationship to spectacle and traumatic events and images as viewers and creators of those images. The, the word that we said the most on set, or I said the most, was spectacle. Mm. And so that was the starting point um, for me in a lot of ways of what I knew I wanted to give the audience. Most of us avoid watching real horror. While the industry for fictional horror movies is huge, there are documentaries of atrocities that are incredibly hard to watch and deeply horrifying on a level far beyond the latest Blumhouse scare that we don't really seek out because they're truly scary, not in the cathartic therapeutic sense, but in a paradigm shattering, existentially terrifying, leave you traumatized or just gross sense. Except maybe we do more than we think we do. We have a really complicated relationship to images of horrifying things. On one hand, we want to look. We all know it's there. No. But sometimes we choose not to look. We avert our eyes. You know, I usually charge a fee for this. Ta da. Mm. Ricky has commodified his trauma. He's turned his experience on Gordy's home into a spectacle that he sells for money. And he's trying to do the same thing with the UFO eating horses. But the only reason Ricky can even do that is because people are deeply fascinated by the horror of the events. There's a growing Gordy's home fan base out there now. This Dutch couple paid me 50k to come in here and spend the night. <laughs> OJ and Emerald want to capture images of the thing that killed their father on camera. Doing this would accomplish three things. First, illuminate the real cause of their father's death as something more than just a freak accident. They said it was a prior plan or something that killed Pops. That they never made sense to me. Second, it would create the potential for fame, money, and recognition in capturing an image of the spectacular or the horrific. Maybe I'm talking rich and famous for life. Because there is a hungry audience for spectacle. And third, with their fame and money, they stand to take back some of the history of their family's involvement in Hollywood that was erased. Did you know that the very first assembly of photographs in sequential order to create a motion picture was a two second clip of a black man on a horse? Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Look it up. Now, I know you guys know Edward Moorbridge, the grandfather of motion pictures, who took the pictures that created that clip. But does anybody know the name of the black jockey that rode the horse? Hmm. 
Horror films themselves are a kind of commodification of trauma, not real trauma usually, although sometimes the lines certainly blur, like with Nope itself where the Gordy's home storyline was inspired by real events. Images of trauma can help make the trauma more visible to those who might deny that it exists. It also might even help those who experience the trauma process it. But for those who bear the responsibility of capturing the images, for those whose trauma it is, for those who don't get to decide whether they look away or not, capturing it doesn't come without a cost. What we document, it's, uh, it's gonna do some good, huh? I mean, besides the money, like we can save some lives, we can even save Earth, right? Jean Jacket, the UFO, shouldn't be looked at. OJ is the one who figures this out and is able to avoid being sucked up into the sky because of it. The power of traumatic images can be avoided by not looking at them. But if we don't look, how do we know it's real? How do we prove to the world that it happened? You never go wrong with a fried fish sandwich. <laughs> There's a scene in Nope where OJ, Emerald, and Angel have all just had this absolutely horrifying experience. One that totally confirms to them the presence of the UFO. And they're grabbing food and debriefing afterward. And OJ... I don't think it eats you if you don't look it in the eye. OJ wants to actually talk about what happened. And this is how Emerald and Angel respond. Hard to heart, bro. You know? Like, read the room. <laughs> Nobody want to talk about that. I don't really know what this scene is saying in the grand scheme of the film, but I know one thing. I recognize the feeling this scene is conveying. There have been more times than I care to mention, especially recently, where I've been hanging out with a group of people and we all just recently learned about something horrific or terrible through the news. And often there's a tension between wanting to talk about it and just put it all out there and wanting to entirely ignore it and just try to maintain a sense of normalcy and move on with our lives. In these scenarios, what is the right thing to do? What's this about? You want me to, you want me to say? I'm sorry, it was wrong, it's dumb. It wasn't dumb, all in the moment. I remember when Russia first attacked Ukraine. I wasn't just hearing news of this happening. For those first 48 hours especially, I was seeing POV footage of the attacks happening from the perspective of Ukrainians. I'm absolutely not equating the horror of seeing those videos with the horror experienced by the people who are actually there. But it struck me that this perspective afforded by a smartphone, the very personal and intimate individual nature of it, had an effect on me that felt very visceral compared to other footage I had seen of war in the past. Smartphones have genuinely changed the way we view from a distance traumatizing and horrific events. While these exact issues might be on Peel's mind with Nope, I think he's exploring this fundamental tension in a slightly different context. A lot of the analysis dealt with spectacle and this industry and business of spectacle and, uh, and that there's a magic to it and something that I've, I've devoted my life to being a part of and there's also something insidious about it. In the opening of the film, we see a strange sort of frame around the credits. We later learn that this is the mouth of the alien itself. After we see the opening credits, the camera flies inside the mouth, and in the heart of the beast we see the Moybridge footage, the first motion picture, and then it cuts to a similar image of a horse on a commercial film set. What is this untamable predator in Nope? It's the film industry. It's impossible to work in this industry for very long without having scars yeah. of moments where you feel like you were um, exploited or feel like you were infantilized or erased. The movie industry has forgotten and erased the black horse jockey in the first motion picture, but it doesn't end there. Peel is engaging with the Western genre in this film. In addition to the setting, he alludes to Sidney Poitier's classic Western Buck and the Preacher, 
one of the few exceptions to Hollywood's whitewashing of the American West, where some historians estimate a quarter of all cowboys were black, a historical presence that is almost entirely missing from Hollywood westerns, where stories about famous black cowboys were often turned into films with a white lead. In Nope, it's this monster predator that kills the black cowboy at the beginning. Capturing that monster on film helps illuminate that, but to do so you have to get close to that thing that can chew you up and spit you out. dream you never wake up from. What's terrifying about these scars is it's, it's wound, it's, it's all wound up in, in the, the quest for attention. Mm. And so that's why, you know, fame is very destructive to people who don't have a secure system. Peel is examining spectacle in this film. He's looking at it and mulling it around, but he's mostly asking questions. Peel doesn't need to offer an answer or solution to this duality, and I don't think he does within the film. Besides honoring the efforts and triumph of OJ and Emerald to capture an image of the monster, and in doing so to help correct some of the erasure that they've experienced. And that's ultimately what Peel is literally doing with this film as well. He's capturing an image of a monster, the monster of our own horrifying fascination and exploitation of spectacle, and in doing so, he's helping to correct some of the erasure that black people have experienced in Hollywood. In an interview with Uprox, Peel talks about the dynamic of having a scene where people are invited to a spectacle when that's also what he's doing with this movie. That scene you're talking about, I think, has some DNA connection to that idea that you can simultaneously invite an audience to a spectacle and indict them and yourself for putting it on and needing that spectacle. And he draws a connection between himself and the character of Ricky. The character he plays is a total character study. It's a unique guy that's based on, I think, observations about the type of trauma that this industry can inflict on people who are launched into the machine of attention. I'm very close to that character, let's put it that way. I think it's easy for people to be frustrated or confused by movies like Nope that explore a duality or tension, especially when the expectation for Peel's work that's been set up by his past work is that he will have a pretty clear, concise, biting social commentary. But I think commentary that doesn't provide an answer and instead pokes and prods at an issue and raises questions is still incredibly valuable and necessary. Nope is a spectacular horror film about the danger of spectacle. It's a big budget Hollywood film that critiques the Hollywood industry. It's not a movie that can draw a clear resolution to those dualities. Instead, it's a film that explores the queasiness that arises when we're not sure if something is good or bad but we find ourselves in the midst of it. Mubi is an online, hand-curated streaming cinema with films from all around the world, classics, art house, and festival favorites. Just recently, they added The Master by Paul Thomas Anderson, which is one of the most beautiful movies I've ever seen. You can check it out right now on Mubi in the US. They add a new film every day with an explanation of why you should check it out, which makes Mubi a great place to discover new and interesting things to watch. Mubi is one of my favorite places to find and watch cinema online. Check them out today and get your extended 30-day free trial when you use my link, that's movie.com slash thomasflight, or click the link in the description or on the screen, movie.com slash thomasflight. Thanks again to Movie for sponsoring this video. Mm -hmm.